to Good Day Forest Hills. We're, We're back. back. I'm Rupanti Wazid. And I'm Esmeralda Herrera coming to you remotely with our 2020 fall episode. We're excited to share with you some great stories and positive news that will all help us get through the fall. Remote learning was rocky, but we got the hang of it now. Speaking of adjusting to remote learning, we would like to start off with some comforting words of wisdom from our school social worker, Mrs. Raddy. Yes, Rapunti, she's got some great tips for us during these hectic times. Our reporter, Isabella, was able to ask her some questions for us. Take it away, Isabella. My first question is, could you please introduce yourself and tell us what kind of services you provide for our students? Hi, everybody. My name is Mrs. Raddy. I'm a counselor at Forest Hills. I'm also the GSA advisor. I hope that all of you are well and that your families are doing well and safe. We're all on this journey through this really weird, um, challenging, difficult time, and I'm just doing a check-in. What can students do and where can they reach out to when they're having issues of sadness, isolation, and troubling thoughts? If you are feeling worried, stressed, or even sad, all of that is really normal, I think, for this particular time that we're in. So I want you just to acknowledge the feelings that you're having, try not to dismiss them. If you do feel overwhelmed by your feelings, and what I mean by that is if you're having trouble sleeping or you're sleeping too much, or you're having trouble eating or eating too much, or if the things that used to make you happy are no longer making you happy, well, then that's time for you to reach out. Reach out to an adult, a parent, an aunt, an uncle, um, a teacher, a guidance counselor, anybody that that you feel you can. And please understand that you'll never be a burden to us. This is what we're here for. All you need to say is, I think I need to talk or I'm feeling overwhelmed and we'll all understand where you're coming from. Lastly, do you have any last piece of advice for our students? This pandemic is gonna pass. We're gonna all get through this. And what's really important is that we get through it whole that this pandemic doesn't take more from us than it already has. And I want you all to be mentally healthy for when it's over. I want you to be mentally healthy for now. Um, so please don't sit with these overwhelmed feelings alone. If you need to reach out, we're all here for you. Thank you for that, Ms. Azrati. Hang in there, everybody. Not everyone is adjusting perfectly. So here is Mr. Jacobs, who runs our SAPIS program at our school, to tell us what that's all about and where you can reach out for help. Our reporter Yosef got some time with Mr. Jacobs. I caught up with Mr. Jacobs, everyone's favorite counselor who runs the SAPIS program here in our school. So Mr. Jacobs, what is our SAPIS program? I am the SAPIS, or the Substance Abuse Prevention Intervention Specialist for Forest Hills High School. Um, I guess that can be called the drug counselor. And um, yeah, I'm the one and only for Forest Hills. There is a SAPIS, or there's supposed to be a SAPIS in every school in the city. How does the SAPIS program work remotely? The SAPIS program is designed to help students to, to live drug-free lifestyles. How it works is through prevention and education. I teach um, about five classes a day throughout the school year um, from different evidence-based curriculums, uh, letting people know how to avoid uh, and what the consequences are for engaging in drugs and alcohol. So what are some things that SAPS program is doing remotely? I have been teaching five classes a day through remote um, learning or teaching, um, be it Google Classrooms or Zoom meetings, um, and I really enjoy it. It seems to be as effective if maybe, you know, e nearly equal to the teaching that I would do in class. What can students do or where can they reach out to if they have an issue or detect a friend is having an issue with substance abuse? If you were to want to get in touch with me for individual counseling through video, um, that is very possible. Or on the blended learning days, if you happen to be in the school on one day a week, you could actually reach out to me through my email, jjacobs9 at schools.nyc.gov. 
<clears throat> or you can reach me on the office phone at the Forest Hills High School phone number and I am extension 2014. Why do you think we still need the SAPIS program? And do you think we need it more than ever? Okay, um, well, I feel like we still need the SAPIS program, uh, or rather we need the SAPIS program more than ever because the level of trauma due to the COVID-19 crisis has more people self-medicating to numb out of life and to just feel no p emotional pain because of all of the distress this current circumstances and situations have put us in. So people at e are even greater risk of becoming addicted to substances because of being quarantined at home. I think the SAPIS program is more than needed and um, I encourage you to continue to request services so that we can receive the funding needed to stay an integral part of the school system. We can't cover fall events without mentioning election time. Oh my, was that a stressful time. Well, Forest Hills ran their own presidential mock election. Can you believe it? Students representing the candidates visited classes and answering questions and running a mock campaign. We had our own Biden and Trump. We got Rosa Gonzalez to meet with our mock candidates and get the results of our mock election. Let's meet the mock candidates who are running a play by our own students. Why are you running? Uh, I am running for this position because I intend to fight for the rights of all American people. Uh, I want to ensure that every American has rights, dignity, and that there is policy in place that ensures that it cannot be taken away from them. Hi, I'm the Biden-Harris campaign manager. Um, we are running to build back our country after these past four years to make it a better and more equitable place for all Americans. Joe Biden nominated me as his vice president because he knew as a team we can bring people's concerns forward. Why are you running for four more years? Hello Forest Hills High School, my name is Vante Juber and I'm the campaign manager for Donald Trump's presidential campaign. Donald Trump is running again because of the impact he has had on the American economy. He has provided millions of jobs for low-income communities and Black and Hispanic communities. What will be your number one priority for the nation right now? Uh, number one priority for our nation right now is 100% uh, fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. And our main priority for the nation right now is dealing with COVID-19 in terms of public health and our economy. Uh, there's been a lot of great mishandling of this uh, pandemic by current people, current leaders in place and current legislation and the Joe Biden and Kamala Harris ticket really intends to listen to our scientists. Under our ticket, we will ensure that people's health is our number one priority. We will ensure that effective regulations are being taken. We want to ensure that you and your loved ones feel secure in your own country. Um, our priorities, if Donald Trump is elected, would be to continuing on doing, making the economy better. What are your goals for the nation if you are elected? Build on health care, criminal justice reform, um, women's rights, racial equality, and, and all these things that make our country great. We need a president who can be diplomatic and does not want any further aggression within our country that's already so polarized. I intend to be that president. Additionally, I think the really big goal of ours is to work on the climate crisis. Um, I have a very progressive climate plan in place that includes uh, achieving 100% clean energy and economy and a net zero, um, net zero emissions no later than 2050. And your goals for four more years? Our current goals right now is to safely open up our economies. People need to get back to work. We need to get back at where we were before the pandemic. We also want to provide a good healthcare system for all Americans that is very affordable for everybody. Thank you. Here's to a better America. Well, thank you, candidates, for running a very spirited campaign. Let's see how we Rangers actually voted. 
Hi Rangers, I'm coming to you from the Mock Collection headquarters about a week after our actual Mock Collection so that I can give you an update on how we as a school voted when we did hold our election on Election Day. Ms. Kelly, why do you do this Mock Collection with us simulating the real presidential election? We've been doing the Mock Collection here at our school for several years. I've been able to run the last three presidential um, elections that we've done, Mock Collections that we've done at our school. I love doing them. It's so great to see kids really stepping up and helping each other and discussing with each other some of the really important local issues, things that really are important to students and, and might be different from what some of the adults are focused on. So it's great to see the engagement. How do you get the votes from the students? Um, when we had our election last week online, um, we used a Google form, so we were a little bit easier to get our information. Um, unlike Nevada and Pennsylvania, we were able to calculate a lot quicker. Could you reveal to us the winner of our mock election? Um, our winner, uh, we had 70% uh, of the student body vote for uh, Biden and 30% vote for Trump. How similar are the results to our mock election to the actual election? Our numbers are very different than the national numbers. This year, uh, we had 50% vote for Biden and and 47% um, for Donald Trump. Um, we did match actually the um, the uh, five boroughs, um, well, all except for Staten Island. Um, the Bronx, Manhattan, and Queens had at least 80% voting for Biden with the remaining voting for Trump. Why do you think Forest Hills High School students voted in this way? We have seen in trends, it is typical that young people aged 18 to 24 typically do vote along Democratic Party lines. The belief is that people within that demographic are still very much invested in working to make the world a better place. So they're able to prioritize social issues. Why do you think the country voted in this way? Um, looking at the way in which the country voted, it was no surprise to me um, to see how close of a race it was this year, historically close, and not just on the national scale, but when you break it down even to the counties, how close it was, which shows you um, the satellite shows you the divide that we have in our country right now. We're not all on the same page. Um, we seem to have two very different views. Um, we typically have seen, as you can see on the map behind me, that you're going to find very often along the coastlines, you're going to typically have a democratic support. It's a little bit more urban and suburban, a little bit more developed, less reliance on rural and farms, um, which is typically why you're going to find that the ec economic priorities are going to be higher for middle America than the social. Um, they also tend not to be as diverse as your urban areas are, so very often it's a disconnect. Um, by getting to do the mock collection, we see how invested you guys are. We see it by the questions that you've asked, the concerns that you have. So um, us, how well prepared and how ready you are for, for you to take on the responsibility of uh, voting when you guys turn 18 and get to vote. Thank you so much, Ms. Kelly. And remember, voting is your right. This is Rosa for Good Day Forest Hills. Well, this election will definitely go down in history. Next up, it's time for our unique new segment, Cooking with Yazzie. It's fall time and we're all comfy at home, so why not make a great dessert? Hi, I'm Yazzie and welcome to the segment where I teach you a new recipe every month. This month, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make apple crisp, which is a little play on apple pie and much easier to make. Okay, first we're going to start off by cutting our apples, and as you can see, I've already cut a few of them up over here, but I'm going to use my apple slicer. Quarter these, you always want to cut on the flat side, so you don't end up cutting yourself. The next thing you're going to want to do is squeeze enough lemon juice so you'll have about one and a half teaspoons of it and then you're going to want to spread that along top of the apples. Next you're going to want to add your sugar and your cinnamon on top of the apples and mix to combine. Now you're going to move your apples to the side and get a large bowl, add in your oats, your brown sugar, cinnamon, and some salt. Now I'm adding in the 3 fourths cup flour. Now we have 
to cut the butter into the dry ingredients. You can use a pastry cutter to do this, but I know not everybody has that, including me. So I'm just using forks, but honestly, you can also use your hands. That works a lot better. This is what your crust should look like after a bit of elbow grease. It should look something like wet sand. After mixing it together, you're going to want to put it on top of your apples and spread it out so it's even. Now you're going to want to pop it in a 350 degree oven for 40 to 45 minutes. Let it cool about 10 minutes after it comes out and enjoy. Now that was professional. Can't wait to see what she teaches us on our next episode. Our next story covers our student government and all their efforts to make our school time just as special, even though we are remote. They even had a lifetime haul for us. Let's meet student government and get a sneak peek at their plans. Yes, we still have a student government, even in these remote times, and they are working hard to still make the school year positive and special. So let's meet them. Can you tell me who you are and what you do? Hey Rangers, my name is Lucy, and I'm currently the Secretary of Student Government. Hi, my name is Chris, and I'm this year's Student Government Treasurer. Hey Rangers, my name is Bensu, and I'm an appointee for Student Government. Hey everyone, my name is Marvin Danzler, and I'm an appointee for Student Government. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Philip, and I'm this year's President of the Student Government. Hi Rangers, my name is Tenzin Jamdo, and I'll be your Vice President for the school year. Hi guys, my name is Sunny, I'm your Senior Governor. As the Secretary, I take minutes during our daily SGO meetings and our monthly GOCC meetings with the principal. I voiced concerns of students, just like every other member of student government, which we discussed with Mr. Wilbur and Mr. Bardosis at our GOCC meetings. I want you guys to keep in mind that we are the communicator and not the final decider. Additionally, I help prepare fun events for our school, as well as spread information and awareness about these school-wide events through posters and Instagram. My job allows me to contribute to planning fun events that everyone can attend to and addressing concerns that students may be having throughout the year. Basically, what my job entails is meeting with my peers on a daily basis where we discuss student questions, concerns, and any ideas they may have in regards to how we can better the school environment. You can associate the president as the captain of a ship, so I'm his right-hand assistant. Um, that meeting, in the absence of the president, I preside over our meetings and create agendas. We meet every day during fifth period where I'm responsible for directing these meetings. A quick description of my job is to keep track of student government's finances along with our club's finances. I also caught up with Ms. Kelly who runs our student government and all school events. What qualities do you see in government students this year that will definitely make them successful? Um, the students that are on student government I've seen it last year and I continue to see it now, have such passion for the school itself. They really want to work very hard to raise the spirit. They want to make school something more than just the academic um, that it provides, but make it a fun place for everyone to come, a safe place for everyone to come, a place where we celebrate diversity. So why is student government important even though we are remote? I, and along with other student government members, are just trying to come up with fun events for us to take part in through remote learning and to try to build a community while we are in this crazy world of remote learning. I believe student government plays a more important role this year than previous years due to remote learning. There have been a lot of questions and concerns during the past two months, and we've been communicating them to the school administrators and trying to come up with a solution. The role of student government is especially vital during these uncertain times that COVID-19 has created. There's been a huge shift in our learning environment and adapting to this change hasn't been easy. With that being said, we need to work together to maintain our spirited and safe school community during these difficult times. And I believe that student government's role in our school is more important than ever. It is our sole duty to voice the concerns of our students to school administrators. Due to remote learning, it is very difficult for students to have an accurate communication with our school. Therefore, we must be their voice and we must get things done that the students want us to accomplish. Why is it important for you to get involved in student government? Definitely important for me to be a part of student government because when I wasn't, I was one of those students who would find out events by myself. I want to have the opportunity to reach out to students and tell them about the events. 
it was important for me to run for student government because I wanted to be someone others can come to when they needed help. When I was a freshman, I didn't know who to go to when I had questions or concerns. What are some things you wish to accomplish this year? It is my goal this year to help as many students as possible succeed during these difficult times. We also seek to improve school spirit by hosting events virtually. We're doing that by planning events such as the Halloween watch party, spirit weeks, and spoiler alert, Among Us game night. One of our top priorities is to ensure your emotional, mental, physical, and academic well-being. Um, we are bringing up your concerns ranging from screen time to club work. One of my goals this year is to start a student newsletter in student government. This year, I hope to restore the communication we all lost due to the wrath of 2020. How we ended things on remote learning, we didn't even get the opportunity to say bye to our teachers. And also, we lost communication with our friends. So hopefully, I can contribute to planning fun events that uh, get that connection back between friends. Miss Kelly, why is it important to run a student government even though we are remote? Since March, they've been that bridge for you guys. You've, you've spoken to them through Instagram and through other means, and they certainly have brought your concerns and thoughts and ideas to the administrators um, who have listened. Miss Kelly, what types of projects will the student government be undertaking during these remote times? Since day one, we've already started planning on different activities um, to try and do. Of course, everything this year is going to be virtual, and we're planning for everything to be virtual. We're trying to keep as many of our traditions and experiences alive. We also know that we're planning on doing FH Factor. It's obviously going to be different this year. Um, we're trying to figure out how to do Sing. Um, we're thinking it might be more um, movie-like than it will be stage presentation. Trying to make sure that we have our clubs and that they're virtually meeting. And we're trying to figure out how we can, you know, support each other um, and celebrate each other and our differences and our similarities. Um, we're open to suggestions and ideas. This year we have our own email address at studentgov with the T at um, foresthillshs.org. Thank you so much for your time, Ms. Kelly. Any messages you would like to send out to the student body? As members of student government, we act as a bridge of communication for students, so I really encourage you guys to reach out and talk to me or any other member of student government regarding questions or concerns you may have. Hang in there. Hopefully we'll have in-person events soon and you guys will be able to have your clubs. We can get through this together. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out when you have any questions, comments, or concerns. We are doing our best to ensure transparency, and I know that many of us feel like we aren't getting answers yet, but I hope you know that we're not ignoring your word or choosing not to tell you anything. It's that we're working with a lot of uncertainty every day, so we don't always have all the answers to all your questions. But I do encourage you to reach out to us through our emails, DMs, or even our personal um, accounts. My final words to you all is remote learning will not be forever. The world as we know will open up again. Just keep a positive mindset and keep pushing. All right, thank you so much, guys. We feel that our school will thrive with our student government. Now back to you, Rupanti and Esmeralda. Well, November is definitely a time for turkey, sweaters, and pumpkins. And no matter how strange times may seem, there's always something to be thankful for. What are you thankful for during this holiday season? especially thankful about my family and my friends. They're really important to me and they have always had my back. I'm Isha and something I'm thankful for is the time that we got to spend with our families during lockdown. I'm thankful for my friends, my family and my life. What I'm grateful for is my family and best friend. Shout out to you, Abby Tom. Hi, my name is Darwin Victor and I'm grateful for my family, me, my mom, and all the things. I'm thankful for my teachers who helped me a lot to, to do my best and explain everything even though online learning is not easy. I'm thankful for my parents because they always support me. I just moved to the United States so I have a, like 11 hours time difference with my friends so it's really hard to talk to them but still they have managed to stay like connected with me. Well, I'm very thankful for my health and my children being fit and active and healthy 
Waking up every morning with a purpose and seeing my students every day. I am thankful to Mother Nature for this amazing fall we've had. Look at this tree. So, you know, we can deal with all the other craziness in our lives right now by getting outside and really enjoying nature. Here we had some bumps in the road, but there's so many little things in life that give us pleasure. So guys, focus on the little things. Like for me, today, I'm sitting out on my stoop with my little lady in a 70 degree day in November, and I am thankful for it. Um, I'm grateful because I'm healthy. Um, I have my family. I have someone that loves me and protects me every day. I'm grateful that I have education. Uh, I'm quite thankful for my health, um, that, that the pandemic didn't affect me. I'm, I'm thankful for my family. Um, and I'm also very thankful for my Forest Hills family, uh, the students, the staff, and the faculty. Guys, I'm very thankful for my two sons, for my Netflix, for my car, and for my job. And of course, that I live in a nation that doesn't just preach democracy, but actually plays it out. Um, Hi, son. I'm Will. I'm her son. <laughs> and I'm thankful uh, for Will's love of music yeah. and that he's sharing with me. He yeah. loves the Beatles. Um, I love Ringo that... Star. I love the Eagles. I love Billy Joel. I love uh, Queen of the Revival. The Ramones. Uh, the Ramones. Yeah. <laughs> They're from Forest Hills. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> music is that it uh, brings happiness and joy to everyone. That's to my students who take a moment of their day to tell me what they're truly feeling. Communication is so essential right now, more than ever. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so much to those students who communicate with us. This year we're thankful for our friends, our family, and all of the time we get to spend together. Right, Riley? You want to say bye? Bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Above all else, I'm thankful for my daughter. She is the sunshine of my life. I'm also super thankful for these two birds behind me. We just got them in August and I'm completely obsessed. When quarantine started and when remote learning started, it was really difficult and it was nice to have friends and family members that I could call. What am I thankful for? My brother. <laughs> the first being my health and the health of those that I care and love. Being able to do what I love, which is to teach. I'm also thankful for Marvel, all things Marvel. And of course, little baby group. As cliche as it sounds, I am thankful for my family, more so now than ever. I'm thankful for having a healthy, safe, and great life, and being able to live with my loved ones. What I'm grateful for is to be able to be in like a, a nice, safe apartment in this time of urgency. Hello, good day, Forest Hills. This is my puppy, Moochie, and I'm very thankful for him because he's been keeping me company through these really tough times. I'm thankful for all my friends. I am extremely thankful for my family, especially my grandma, God bless her soul. Grateful for the school. I'm thankful for the fact that I got up out of bed this morning. I wish you all a very, very happy Thanksgiving. So guys, remember, make it a positive, stay simple, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and uh, stay safe, guys. Talk to you soon. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Peace and love. Peace and love. Happy Thanksgiving. Just great. Thank you for sharing, everyone. Are you ready now for some life hacks to be tested? We're always looking for tips and ideas on the internet. Here is our segment, Life Hacks with Jamila. The first life hack we're going to do, I'll insert the clip here. So I just got Zoom opened up and we're going to try this hack out. Now I have Zoom opened up, I'm going to go into the settings and I'm going to go to preferences. The video says you go under uh, the video setting, I believe, and then it says touch up my appearance. So you can see me now. I'm going to prop up my computer and let's see if the settings work. So I tried touch up my appearance. There's like a way you could scroll between 
how much you want it touched up and i think it works pretty good and it like softens the background so if you don't want everybody to see what's in your background that works and it kind of brightens it too so i think that's really cool you could also adjust the light which i didn't know so you could brighten it you could darken it that's really cool i overall rate that hack a 9 out of 10 only because it's useful but not every class uses zoom this hack we're going to try is a jean hack so i'm gonna have to change real quick i have a pair of jeans on and i'm going to try this mysterious hack so i gotta get a pair of earrings <laughs> i have this earring it's pretty similar to the one the girl used in the video i'm gonna try this hack out that did not work okay i rate that tiktok hack a zero out of ten it didn't work for me personally maybe i used the wrong kind of earrings i don't know but it did not work the third and final hack i'm going to try is another jean hack so i'm dressed prepared i'm supposed to pull the button right here through this loop i believe and they're supposed to fit me better, which they actually do. So that hack I give a 10 out of 10, and it's something I might be using in the future if I buy a pair of jeans that don't fit. I'm pretty surprised that it actually worked. At first I had a little bit of trouble. <laughs> that concludes today's life hacks. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your month. Thank you, Jamila. We'll keep those hacks in mind, and we'll see what she tests out for us next time. Here's a great thing happening that we should all check out. Miss Clemis, our librarian, is running a remote book club and safe space. Wow, that's pretty great for students to find some comfort in friends, even in these remote times. Let's see what Miss Clemis said to our reporter, Crystal Quinones. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for meeting with us. Can you tell us a little bit about your plan? now we all cannot physically be together and it's important that we still have a connection with each other and that we have a community of people that we can talk to our book club will be meeting once a month why is the virtual book club an important thing to do right now um so this is a great time for us to be flexible and try new things and really make the most of what we have to work with and books have the power to connect people so they let us feel like we're not alone. I also want to make sure that everyone listening knows that they have access to the three public library systems in New York City and you have the right and ability to obtain an electronic card and barcode to all three of the library systems. What are some of the books to be read or did you start a book yet? The first book we read together was They Called Us Enemy, which is a graphic novel memoir by George Takei, and it's about his experience as a child being placed in an internment camp during World War II. He ended up going on to have a very successful life and career in spite of what he experienced in his youth, and I think that's a lesson that's really relevant today with what's going on with the pandemic. What do you mean about making a safe space for students, and why is that important? One of my favorite things about Forest Hills High School is how diverse everyone is, how every student has different interests, different uh, passions, different identities. And so I really feel like the library is a place where students can feel free to be themselves. We don't give out grades in the library. We try to just make a space where everyone feels comfortable. And that's still true virtually. We have had discussions with students about feeling stressed about classes or having difficult um, difficulties with time management. And, you know, there are also kids just looking for book recommendations or wanting to share a favorite K-pop album. If they didn't see your flyer, how can students join? The code for the Google Classroom is 3E4PAOR. And students can also visit the school library website, follow the school library on Instagram, or follow me on Goodreads to see what I'm reading. What activities will be done? Some of the afternoon activities so far have included trivia contests, music, listening, 
um, playing Among Us and Roblox or just chatting and having a safe space. So I want every student to know that the library is a space for them, whether we're in the school building or still at home. What do you hope to accomplish with the school classroom? I've been thinking about having a cooking club, um, you know, where we do a recipe from a cookbook and talk about it and eat it together and uh, maybe a craft session. And I also want to let everyone know that we are having an author visit in December. The book is called Don't Ask Me Where I'm From. It's by Jennifer DeLeon. And the students who like to participate will be able to have a free copy of the book that they can keep. So if anyone is interested, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Klamis, and see you at the Virtual Book Club. Let's meet the class of 2024 and see what the class of 2021 has to say to them. Hi, my name is Lanaya Fuller, and this is my freshman interview. So the first question, now that you're in high school, is it what you expected, why or why not? Well, of course, it's not what I expected because we're in a global pandemic, but I'm going to try to make the best out of what I have. Where it asks, uh, is high school what you expected? I said no, because um, I, expect, I expected there to be a bigger social aspect and like more hands-on like interaction. I, it's not it's not expected um because coronavirus and online schooling and the two worries that I have about high school is schoolwork and class. Now that I'm here, is it anything that I expected? In all honesty, no. It was nothing of what I expected. I thought that I'd be in a classroom ha making new friends, having new experiences, making new memories, and so many more things. Sadly, we're doing remote learning, but it's okay because I'm still making new friends and having new experiences. So the answer to the question is yes and no. Second question, what are your two worries you have about high school? My two worries are that I won't be able to make friends as I would usually do because of the pandemic. And my second worry is that I will fall behind in school. Two worries I have about high school is like whether I'll do as good as I could have like in like real person opposed to online and another uh, worry I might have is like whether I'll ever like go to school. I worry if I'm gonna have the willpower or not to go ahead with all the goals that I sent for myself and if I'll feel like I can keep going, I can push through this bump in the road or stuff like that and then the second thing i worry about is pretty basic but it's definitely my grades i worry so much about my grades i'm trying to get straight A's and graduate third question now that you're here what are you looking forward to in high school experience well i'm looking forward to the opportunities that high school will give me and making new friends and now that i'm here I'm looking forward to just making new friends, becoming social again, you know, getting out of this jail, so yeah. I'm looking forward to a variety of clubs and how I'll be able to choose which one I want to be in. I'm also excited about senior prom. There is so much things that I'm looking forward to now that I'm in high school, <laughs> like too many to think about. I have heard of all these cool experiences and stuff to do while I'm in high school. I'm in the drama club, so all the co fun and cool things that we're gonna do, even if it is through a computer. So that's one of my biggest things to look forward to. That's it, go Rangers! Go Rangers, woo! Some advice I could give to some freshmen for remote learning is to try to make friends, be nice to your teachers, turn your cameras on, everything is as new to them as it is to you. One thing that really helped me this year was group chats. I would 10 out of 10 recommend making a group chat for almost all of your classes. It helps you bond with a lot of students that you would never met before. And it also helps if you miss a day or something like that because usually you would go to class and ask somebody for their notes. We're getting through it together and definitely by the time when you're a senior, at least you'll get a graduation and prom and stuff like that. One tip I have for freshmen is do not screw up your first assignment. Once you screw up your first assignment, your entire accumulative is gone for like 
you're gonna have to work your way up. If you're a freshman, make sure you join clubs, find a sport that you really like, join that, and make sure to keep up your grades throughout high school. One advice I have for freshmen um, during remote learning is to find an environment where you can, you're able to concentrate perfectly on your work. So find like a quiet place where you can accurate so that you don't get distracted. Some advice that I would give to the freshmen would definitely be to manage your time well. I feel like with remote learning, there are so many deadlines to remember, so many things to keep up with, and it can be really stressful and overwhelming, and it takes a toll on our mental health. And so whether it means planning out your stuff or you know, writing down your deadlines in a calendar or a planner, if that helps you stay organized and less overwhelmed, I highly suggest that whether it's getting more sleep or eating healthier or drinking more water, those little things seem so insignificant, but they actually make a huge difference in how you feel in terms of your stress levels. A piece of advice I'd give a freshman is to always make sure that they are making good decisions because the decisions you make now will always affect you in the future. And the advice I have for doing learning online is to always make sure you're handing your work in on time and you're putting a lot of effort into it. And some wisdom I've obtained since freshman year is you're going to go through like a lot of changes now. Like you're going to find out new things about yourself. So don't be afraid of change because it's going to happen. I just wanted to welcome you to Forest Hills High School. I know that it's not easy now and it's not the same because we're stuck in this remote situation but you know just sending advice make the best out of it you know like find a group of friends that you can count on and that you guys can help each other when things get hard in your courses you know just stay strong and stay positive lesson not everyone you trust will stay loyal not everyone you love will stay some people just exist as examples of what to avoid. And the next beautiful quote by Rumi. Yesterday I was smart, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I want to change myself. I hope you like these advice and it helps you throughout the way of high school. Until next time. Well, that's all we have for this month. Good luck with marking periods two and three. Catch us again for a winter episode after the new year. Happy holidays, stay strong, stay positive, and let's welcome in 2021 with great hopes. This is Rupanti Wazid. And Esmeralda Herrera saying, Good, Good day, day, Forest Hills! Forest Hills.